So as we move on to our flow, our improvisational portrait, this is a good time to stop and test out your pens. As much as I love my Micron pens for hatching and cross hatching, you know, these are great for those really close up details. These are great for getting lots of nice layers of close hatching. So as I'm building up layers to get my traditional hatch marks going, then I love this. But if I'm gonna be drawing kind of loose and fast, I almost feel this pen is gonna hold me back a little bit because I uh, don't wanna push down accidentally as I'm going. So I'm gonna keep this for my traditional hatch marks. So I have a couple of other options here. One is a Sharpie pen. This one, it's a little bit of a thicker line, but it's a little bit more solid. So I don't feel like I'm gonna ruin the pen quite as easily, which is gonna free me up, honestly, to be able to draw in the moment a little bit more. Um, this is a different type of Micron Pigma. It's a graphic one. So you can see the tip is a lot different. It is more solid, but I'm also gonna have a much thicker line. So if that's okay and I'm all right with that, then I can do that one too. And then we just have our basic Sharpie Ultrafine. Same thing, this one is kind of in between the Sharpie pen and the Micron. So I could definitely do a good flow with this one as well. For this project, I'm gonna lean towards one of the Sharpie pens because I'm not gonna feel like I'm gonna break my Micron pen. So now let's move on to how to start this. So I'm gonna use that Charlie Parker playing the saxophone image that we saw earlier. I'll give you a shot of it right now. This is a different style of drawing than most of you are used to. So first of all, these are quick, loose, gestural, improvisational, like just kind of getting into the flow of things. You are still gonna build up with really loose uh, movements. So one thing you need to do is identify where there's gonna be less line, the lighter areas. So for me, in the face and the top of the saxophone, maybe like the shoulder area, there's gonna be less lines. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna build them up still in a loose way. I do wanna be aware of where the lighter areas are versus the darker areas. The darker areas, I can be real loose and improvisational and I can build those up and it's okay if they kinda of get all jumbled and everything. The other thing you wanna remember is that sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get into that flow moment. When I do drawings like this, quite often, the first one or two is we'll just call them a warm-up drawing. <laughs> They're definitely not uh, gonna be the end result, let's say. But it's part of the process because you do have to go through that experimentation. Art, jazz, all these things. It's uh, trial and error and you're experimenting, you're seeing what works and what doesn't work. So if you end up with an awful, awful first try, <laughs> it's okay. That's step one, it's part of the process. Uh, be okay with not being good at this. It takes a little while. So one thing you might want to do is what we do with figure drawing. When we do gesture, life drawing, right? Set a timer and do this for five minutes. See what happens. Do a couple of those. Mm, set a timer for 10 minutes. See how much more developed you get. Do a few of these kind of warm ups to build up the idea. Maybe one of those warm ups turns into your final version and it's okay. This can be loose and sketchy and if you do this in 10 minutes, that's great. One thing I have to watch out for is just thinking like, well, where's the face? And um, for these, we're not gonna start with a sketch. <laughs> You're just going for it. But I do have to kind of think like head and saxophone. If my shoulder goes off the edge, I'm okay with that. So I need to make sure I have enough space for the head and for the at least first part of the sax. At that point, make sure you're really looking at your reference material. Make sure you're not so focused on your drawing that you're not looking at the original. These are almost, you could do a purchase as a blind contour as well, where you're looking more at your drawing, or, or your reference material and not so much at your drawing. So these can be very loose, kind of get the rough idea. So there's a couple of different ways we can approach this. This is the first one where it's a little bit more loose and exploratory at the beginning. So this is kind of one of those prep studies that you know I was talking about. Maybe I'm kind of building up where there's gonna be shadow, the ear. There's a lot of shadow on this side of the face. So 
So now I can keep going. I'm gonna stop and get a little bit more of the um, actual where the eyebrow is. Closed eyes. We got these concentration furrowed eyebrows. Once you get into, if you, know, if you have an instrument, sometimes that gets a little easier because the pressure's off. Saxophone, I can get real loose with this. Just a couple of these kind of things. All that, and on this side, we got a hand. So now I can get in there and get real loose and quick with getting some basic values. There's a shadow underneath that edge of the saxophone. So I don't have to worry about traditional hatch marks on this one. So we're capturing movement, flow. And now we can go back a little bit. Got a little bit more shading going on under his chin. So now I can start paying a little bit more attention. Is this perfect? No, not at all. Okay, a little bit more shape in the nose. So this is where I can kind of start getting a little bit more specific now. It still is loose and gestural. And then I would continue on, obviously, <laughs> with the rest of this. But you can see it's obviously not an exact photorealistic portrait. But instead, what I'm trying to do is capture the essence. I'm trying to capture the motion a little bit. And this is maybe, you know, version one. I would do a second version. Do the same thing. And there's a couple of other approaches. So let's stop with this one and show you one or two different approaches to this. So if I'm trying to still be automatic, but this is another approach that sometimes people feel I'm a little bit more comfortable with, is paying a little bit more attention to the very, very first marks without it being loose and gestural and exploratory at the beginning. Be uh, just a little bit more intentional about your outline of where is the face. So where I see more of a defined edge. So some people might feel a little bit more comfortable being a little bit more specific. You know, those extra bits. And so then once I've started that way, if I feel a little bit more comfortable, so if I want to pay attention to that collar and then outline of the coat, the line created by that, I can be a little bit more specific. Look at that bow tie kind of going on. So I can start with the shapes a little bit more. But then, once I'm there, if I don't loosen up, otherwise it becomes pretty much the same drawing we just did. So at that point now, now I gotta get going. So now I'm gonna start being a little bit looser and then do kind of the same thing we did. So if you're having a hard time, you can start by getting a little bit more of these actual like defined lines that you see as a starting point. If you can try it the other way, the real loose uh, approach, start with that. Because sometimes it's hard to go back and get real loose after the fact. But it's understandable that sometimes it's hard to loosen up. So now, if I'm starting this way, then I'm still going to make sure and go through and 
delve into some of this looseness. Cheekbone. I still haven't quite captured the eyes in the right shape on version number one or number two. But besides that, you can see how now, now I mixed the two approaches. So I have this going on where I started with a little bit more specific line. So the idea is maybe I start with a little bit more of specific parts. So if I want to show a little bit more the hand in edges. So if I want to start with more of a line drawing, I can. But just make sure you don't revert back because part, a big part of this is that interpretation and flow and looseness. So if I get going from here, at some point I need to loosen up. But if you're a little bit more comfortable being a little more precise on our first parts. So once again, some of you are going to be a little bit more comfortable starting with a little bit of a line drawing. But don't stay there. After you get this outline, make sure then you're adding a little bit more of that flow, that movement. Get that. All that going on. So now we still need to add in some loose shadow. Loose shadows. We don't want anything too static where it feels like it's untouched. So even here in this, um, even here in this jacket area, I'm gonna not worry about the plaid. I'm not worrying about the, you know, shape. That's actually the fabric. But I'm getting a little bit more of the like flow what's underneath it with the figure. Similar to our figure drawing. Same thing if I did the hands more linear. That's all right. But now I need to still go back there and there's a little bit of shading on this side. You know, maybe I'm kind of add in where the knuckles are in a sense. All right. So I'm not going to leave it I'm going to pick up speed and then still get that loose interpretive gesture. All. Two different approaches. I still don't totally have it down yet, right? I still have maybe another one or two flows, but you can tell this drawing started out a little bit more specific on the edges. And then once I got my landmarks kind of down of where everything was going to be, then I uh, added in a lot. So, you know, especially even if you look at like forehead and the edges and the nose, I added a lot of that movement kind of scrolling in a sense. I could keep going, you know, especially like I said on this uh, chin area, there's like a lot more shadow going on here. Over here where the ear is, there's some more going on over there too. So I'm not done. But you can get the feeling of how you can start with a more specific line, but then still be loose and gestural. Or else, start loose and gestural and build up from there. Either way is fine.